Hello students, welcome to the first lecture of Power System Planning and Design. In today's lecture, we are going to start our first chapter that is Transmission Line Design. So, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss about how we can select the transmission voltage. Now before going to start the topic, I would like to introduce about the transmission line. Now as we know that electrical power is generated in power station and it is necessary to send this power to the different remote areas so that with the help of distribution substation, the power can be distributed. Now the first question is, what is the power transmission line and what is the need of power transmission? So the flow of power from the power station to the main distribution substation is generally called the transmission line and this transmission line is very much needed because our generating station and distribution substation or we can say the remote location where the power is actually being consumed are very far. So with the help of transmission line we can connect the generating station and the distribution system. The voltage generated is step up to the voltage of the transmission and this power is transmitted through the transmission lines. Now the transmission networks are high voltage transmission line and which is used to transfer the bulk amount of power from generating station to the area of the consumption. Okay, so these are generally called the long transmission line. Now, the standard voltage generally we are using in India are 765 kV, 400 kV, 132 kV and 110 kV transmission lines. Now when we talk about 765 kV transmission line, there is a recent development of this kind of transmission line. Now if you look at this figure, here there is single circuit tower and another one is double circuit tower. In single circuit transmission line, may be seen there are three conductor right here pertaining the three phase which is R phase, Y phase and B phase and at the top of the tower there will be the ground wire to protect the transmission line from the lightning stroke. Now if you look at the double circuit tower it generally carries six live conductors and these six conductors constitute two separate transmission circuit each consisting of R, Y, B and R, Y, B each okay so at the top of the tower there are two ground wires to save the conductors of the both circuit from the lightning stroke okay so this is a general brief uh, discussion about upon uh, the transmission line if we talk about the classification of different transmission line then we can classify this into short transmission line medium transmission line and long transmission line now what is short transmission line so the transmission line which is having the length less than 80 kilometers which is known as short transmission line. When we talk about the operating voltage for short transmission line is less than 20 kV. Okay. Now due to the small distance and the low voltage capacity the effect of capacitance can be negligible in case of short transmission line. So the performance of the transmission line is generally depends on the value of resistance and the value of inductance only. Although the resistance and inductance are distributed along the length of the line, but in short transmission line, these constants are assumed to be lumped parameter. Okay, they are not considered to be distributed parameter, but we are considering these line parameters are lumped. If we talk about the standard voltage in case of short transmission line, it is 11 kV, 22 kV and 33 kV. Now let us discuss about the medium transmission line. So the transmission line which is having the length between 80 km to 40 km and the line voltage between 20 kV to 100 kV are considered as medium transmission line. Now due to the appreciable length of the transmission line which is 80 to 240 km or we can say the voltage is also somewhat higher than the short transmission line there is considerable effect of charging current and considerable effect of shunt capacitance okay so that we cannot able to neglect although this capacitance are distributed uniformly over the entire length of the conductor yet we are considering them as a lumped parameter only okay 
so standard voltage in case of medium transmission line are 66 kV and 110 kV now if we look at the long transmission line so operating voltage is more than 100 kV and the transmission line which is having the length of 240 km is known as long transmission line now in case of long transmission line the effect of capacitance is very high that is why the charging current is very high if we talk about the parameters it is generally distributed parameters and we have to consider this parameter as a distributed parameters standard voltage in case of long transmission lines are 132 kV 166 kV and 400 kV you can also consider 765 kV now if we look at the electrical design of transmission line so the main topic is the selection of transmission voltage how we can select the value of your transmission voltage so we know that the power to be transmitted over the transmission line is given by p is equal to root 3 vl il cos phi now vl is the line voltage here il is the line current and cos phi is the power factor the value of current is generally depends on the value of current density and the cross sectional area of the conductor and if you look at for any kind of transmission line both these things delta and your cross sectional area a which is going to be fixed so the value of current is also going to be fixed so in that case we can say that your power p is directly proportional to the value of vl or we can say line voltage here il you can represent it by p divided by root 3 vl cos phi we will come back to this formula later now as the voltage increase the cost of the conductor decreases okay because here you can see that il is inversely proportional to voltage okay but your current is directly proportional to the cross sectional area of the conductor it means if your voltage increases your here you can see the cost of the conductor decreases because the area of the conductor decreases or we can say the radius of the conductor decreases so as we are increasing the voltage the cost of the conductor decreases but the cost of insulator and tower increases why we can say that because the rating and cost of the substation equipment uh, like your transformer your switch gear and protective device will be increased so as the voltage increase the cost of the conductor comes down but the cost of the insulators and the tower increases this is because the superior types of insulator in large numbers are required and also the you can say the height of tower is increased okay so overall cost and voltage is plotted so if we plot the overall cost and voltage the v-shaped curve is obtained and voltage corresponding the minimum overall cost is selected okay so this is how the selection of transmission voltage is done now if you look at this formula that is il is equal to p divided by root 3 vl cos phi so we know that area of the conductor is now inversely proportional to the line voltage because your current il is directly proportional to the area of conductor so higher the value of voltage the less uh, will be the conductor area required okay so in that way we can say that now the smaller conductor has following advantage so here we are discussing about if the radius of the conductor or we can say the diameter of the conductor or the area of the conductor is less in that case we have some advantages now what are that advantages the first one is weight of the line is reduced that is obvious reason the second one is due to the reduced weight uh, we need the uh, supporting structure which is uh, we can uh, deal with the weak supporting structure or we can say uh, there is a saving in supporting structure uh, the third advantage is reduction in line losses so the transmission of electrical power at high voltage reduce the line current and if we decreasing the current it means we are reducing the i square r losses okay the fourth advantage is high transmission efficiency 
so the transmission of electrical power at high voltage reduces the line losses and that is why the transmission efficiency is also improved and the last advantage is better voltage regulation so due to the small current at high transmission voltage the voltage drop in transmission line is also going to be reduced so this leads to the better voltage regulation okay so these are the some advantages of small conductor okay or we can say the area of the conductor is reduced in this case these are the ad advantages now what are the limitation of high transmission voltage so the first limitation is increased cost of line support so for high transmission voltage the insulation required between the conductor and earth tower is also more and in this case the cost of the conductor or we can say your cost of your tower is going to be increased the second is higher tower so for transmission of voltage the clearance between the conductor and ground should be more and therefore higher towers are required okay and another thing is longer cross arm so for high transmission voltage the distance between the conductor also should be more in this case the uh, length of the cross arm is going to be increased so final conclusion is going to be made that the from above discussion it is concluded that overall economical to transmit power at high voltage and it is advisable to transmit power at high voltage although if the transmission voltage is too high the economy achieved by uh, various uh, advantages that we have discussed in previous slides may be cancelled by its limitations but compromise has to be made in selection of the transmission voltage so that we have discussed that uh, the cost of the conductor and the voltage requirement if we plot this graph and that will be a v curve so we have to select transmission voltage based on our requirement okay so you have to deal with some kind of advantages and the limitation that we have discussed in previous section okay so that compromise has to be made in case of the selection of the transmission voltage so i hope you understand how we can select the transmission voltage for any kind of transmission system okay so this is all about today's lecture when we meet in next lecture we will going to be discuss about the choice of line conductor okay so thank you so much see you guys next time